probabilistic models and safety stock. This model is used when demand is not constant or certain. That's why we need safety stock to achieve a desired service level and avoid stockouts. Let's meet Linda, a fashion retailer. Her store demand is not constant because of changing trends every time. That's why Linda needs safety stock so she can avoid stockouts. Linda already have ROP for her fashion retailer. It's 50 units. With number of order is six per year. Stockout cost $40 per item. Carrying cost $5 per item per year. Linda's store has experienced the following probability distribution for inventory demand. Next column shows the amount of safety stock that minimizes the sum of the additional inventory holding costs and stockout costs. For each safety stock, Linda compute the additional holding cost, stockout cost, and total cost. A safety stock of 20 items gives the lowest total cost. This safety stock will change the reorder point from 50 units to 70 units. So Linda needs 70 items to avoid stockouts. This is how we put a probabilistic demand into a graph. The figure shows the use of safety stock when demand is probabilistic. We start out with an order quantity, Q, which are not constantly used up over time. Then, this are ROP points. We have to reorder when our stock hit this point to avoid stockout. Since demand is fluctuated, we use safety stock as a buffer. Assuming that demand during lead time follows a normal curve, only the mean and standard deviation are needed to define the inventory requirements for any given service level. This was a normal distribution probability of demand during lead time, and this was expected demand during lead time. When Linda receive order as exactly when she hit safety stock, she can avoid stock out for her fashion retailer. For probabilistic demand, use prescribed service levels to set safety stock when the cost of stockouts cannot be determined. Reorder point is the addition of demand during lead time and safety stock where the safety stock is the number of standard deviations multiplied by standard deviation of demand during lead time. Let's get back to how Linda avoids stockouts. Average demand for a t-shirt is 350 pieces, with standard deviation of demand during lead time is 10 pieces. Stockout policy we use 5% with 95% service level. Using table Z for an area under the curve of 95%, the Z is 1.645. So we need safety stock by 1.645 multiplied by 10, we get 16.5 pieces. For reorder point, we add expected demand during lead time plus safety stock. We got 366.5 or 367 pieces. For other probabilistic models, like when data on demand during lead time is not available, there are other models available. When demand is variable and lead time is constant. When lead time is variable and demand is constant. When both demand and lead time are variable. When demand is variable and lead time is constant, we will use this ROP formula. If Linda have average daily demand normally distributed by 15 pieces, lead time is 2 days, and the standard deviation of daily demand is 5. With 90% of service level, so Z from table Z for 90% is 1.28. Then we will use the formula and get the reorder point at 39 pieces. Meanwhile, the safety stock is about 9 pieces. When lead time is variable and demand is constant, we will use this ROP formula. Now if Linda have daily demand by 10 pieces, and average lead time is up to 6 days, the standard deviation of time is 1E, with service level 98%. So Z from table Z is 2.055. Then we will use the formula and get 80.55, or the reorder point is about 81 pieces. When both demand and lead time are variable, we will use this ROP formula. If Linda have average daily demand normally distributed by 150 pieces, with standard deviation is 16, average lead time normally is 5 days, 
with standard deviation is one day, service level 95%, so Z from table Z is 1.645. Then we will use the formula and get reorder point is about 1,003 items. Now both Andy and Linda can prepare their inventory for investment without worrying about stock out.